Sup y'all, and welcome to Technological and Environmental Transformations, Part 4. In this video, we're going to investigate the birth of urbanization. One of the most significant turning points in human history occurred starting around 3500 BCE. It was at this time the first civilizations emerged, which are advanced cultures characterized by social hierarchies, symbolic communication forms, and a separation from the natural environment. Urbanization was a prerequisite for a civilization to form, and we can establish three elements necessary for the formation of both. The first two have already been discussed. A society needs an agricultural surplus, as well as permanent settlements for sedentary living in order to grow and expand. The third element is social stratification, which is a hierarchy of power and class structure within a society. We already mentioned that most people were farmers, however, specialists were also able to develop. Additionally, a leadership class, or elite, would emerge to maintain control and organize their villages, and their power was often hereditary, passing their authority from generation to generation. The first urban revolution started around 3500 BCE on the supercontinent of Eurasia along the Fertile Crescent, aptly named the Cradle of Civilization. And you can see some of the city-states highlighted within the Mesopotamian state of Sumer in the map on your screen. The first urban hearth and civilization took hold between the Tigris and Euphrates and Mesopotamia, Greek for land between rivers. Developing soon after were the Egyptians along the Nile. Beginning around 3000 BCE, one of the oldest civilizations developed between the central coast of modern-day Peru and the Andes Mountains. Somewhat later, around 2600 BCE, a civilization sprung up adjacent to the Indus River Valley of modern-day Pakistan and South Asia. Around 2200 BCE, and along the Huang He River Valley of East Asia were the Chinese. The most recent of the first civilizations developed around 1200 BCE in Mesoamerica around the southern part of modern-day Mexico. Most were in the northern hemisphere and relatively close to the Tropic of Cancer. The lone exception was ancient Peru. However, it was still equidistant from the equator close to the Tropic of Capricorn. The shape or territorial morphology of Eurasia was also significant. Its east-west orientation allowed for an easier diffusion of plants, animals, and trade, because places along similar lines of latitude have the same length of day and often similar climates. The first urban hearths were usually in great situations, meaning they possessed favorable relative locations with respect to other places. The largest cities were often located along transport nodes or intersections of two or more lines of transportation, such as roads, rivers, and oceans. However, the other two great continents, the Americas and Africa, possess a north-south orientation. Their civilizations remain largely isolated and fragmented by extreme variations in climate from one end to the other. There are plenty of negative characteristics associated with urbanization. While the city centers were decent and sometimes elaborate, most people lived meagerly in mud-bricked houses. The lanes between homes were usually very narrow, and waste disposal was often scant or non-existent. As a result, disease was rampant, keeping the urban populations relatively small. Remember that urban dwellers worked harder, had worse diets, and individually may have been worse off. The average hunter-gatherer was healthier, taller, stronger, and lived longer. However, people are social beings, and most prefer to be concentrated around each other. The potential for prosperity was greater in cities because there are more opportunities. However, the majority of people were arguably worse off than if they had remained in rural conditions. Civilizations also had problems as occupational specialization increased, so did inequality. The work and production of farmers, artisans, and others was often reduced through taxes and tribute. Wars became more expensive and more destructive as civilizations competed for land and power. Slavery and forced labor was introduced, as well as the reduction in the influence and power of women. Patriarchal societies became the norm. Nonetheless, besides the negatives, Clearly, cities and civilizations proved to be more successful over time. Cities served as political and religious centers. Leaders were often viewed as divinely powerful or even to be god-kings themselves. As such, cities usually possessed better organization. Cities were also economic nodes where merchants and traders exchanged goods between local markets and faraway lands. 
They were educational and cultural centers where teachers, philosophers, and students learned from each other and expressed themselves in unique ways. A sort of pre-industrial revolution took hold in the cities, with so many specialists thinking and working collectively. Language also became more specialized, and written language was invented, likely initially by accountants to tabulate goods and taxes. Written language allowed laws to be codified and for science and discovery to often flourish. Mathematics allowed for larger structures to be built, for irrigation to be organized, and for accurate calendars to be created. Tools often became more valuable than weapons. Cities and states, whether they were cooperating or competing, improved each other through the compounding effects of political, economic, and intellectual interaction. Well, Lottie Frick!